Once again, um, a great and glorious and happy Easter to each one of you this day. The gospel today is read from the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, he is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, grabbed his feet, worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go now and tell the others. Go to Galilee, for there they will see me. Gospel for this Easter day. If you would, please, join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for life. We give you thanks for the new life promised in this resurrection. Grant us peace with things that are difficult. Grant us peace to accept that which is offered freely. Grant us uh, wisdom to stand in the mystery of who you are and how you are in this world. Be with us now through the presence of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, I woke up this morning with um, a song in my head, and it's a children's song. And it's one I bet that most of you know. And um, I don't sing very well, okay? So I'm going to need your help with this one. But it's an old camp song. It's a Sunday school song. It goes, I've got that joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Thank you. <laughs> down in my heart. Down in my heart. Could you sing that with me? Phil? You, you did? Good. Cool. <laughs> And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. You can sing this with me, baby. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. Very good. Thank you. For 8 o'clock, that was pretty good. Okay? There was a reason why I picked that song. And it has to do with joy. And I kind of decided somewhere along the way that for this Easter, I didn't really want to um, do much more than to invite you to celebrate today. I don't want to go through the resurrection a whole lot today. We know that story. I don't want to um, make an argument. And I don't want to encourage you to go out there and be evangelists in this world in any other way other than I want you to go out and be people filled with joy. And if you are, and if you can trace that joy to somehow what God has done for you in your life, you're doing exactly who you were called to be as Jesus' followers. Okay? So I want to go through a few things with you today. We already said this earlier today, but let's try this again. Jesus is risen. He is risen Very good. Jesus is risen. He is risen okay, I think there's an echo to this. That's centuries old, okay? But the echo might go something like this, okay? Jesus has risen from the grave. You say that with me? Jesus has risen from the grave. And the answer to that is rise now from your graves. Okay. I think one of the real difficult things with the world is that we accept our graves, sometimes dig our own graves, sometimes roll the stone right in place all by ourselves. There is no measure of evil that has to do that for us. We willingly do that to ourselves. And today I want to talk to you about freedom. Listen to some of these verses from Scripture. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Earliest first century Christians from a town called Galatia. 
who had heard about Jesus and knew about the resurrection. And this is how they formulated what it meant to them. For freedom, Christ has set you free. Or from the people of Corinth, um, where the spirit of Jesus is, there there is freedom. Or this one. Again, from Galatians. You were called to freedom. Okay. For those of us who follow Jesus, we have to resist the, the, the stone. And if we're not strong enough, God is certainly willing to resist all the stones that we are willing to find. For we have been called to a life of freedom. Okay. Or this from Romans, Paul's letter to the people of Rome. The spirit of life in Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. If there's any real fundamental problem with Christians is that we don't believe what we say. We come to Easter and we talk about freedom. We come to Easter and talk about joy. And then we crawl back into our tombs on Monday and imprison ourselves with all sorts of things that we don't believe to be true. Okay. You see, Jesus came to liberate people. Jesus came to proclaim the kingdom of God. And a kingdom is a kingdom where people are free to be who they were supposed to be. Take a look at Zacchaeus, for instance, in that really familiar story about this man who had sold himself out, sold out his town, sold out his country. He was a collaborator with the Roman Empire, and Jesus set him free. Free from all his greed, free from his self-centered life, free. Or if you take a look at the story about the, um, the prodigal son and the father, the son certainly gets free, but so does the father. I mean, the image of the father is that the father is free to love with abandon. That the father is free to have an irrational love for his son. And in that story, we are to see ourselves both as the son and as the father. And when we see ourselves as the father, it gives us permission to love people irrationally. Or if we think about the story in the parable of the Good Samaritan there, the, 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 the parable was told that people might release themselves into the freedom of extravagant and undeserved love. Okay. Jesus was all about freedom. Even those who were broken of body or mind, Jesus offered them wholeness and freedom from their bondage. Okay. So if you want to get all the way down to the point of all of this, and the point of our life in Jesus is to live in the abundance of love and hope and joy. Okay. That when the tomb comes open and Jesus rises, so too do all the things that are binding us break. And we're free to live. You see, God's intent for us never changed. The God's, God's intent from the moment that all of this was created and set into motion the intent that God had the very first day you took your very first breath is the same intent that God had at Easter, and it's the same intent that God has for you now, that you can be God's shining child. And you can live in all of the abundance of what God has made you to be. And the secret to life isn't to want to be somebody else or to somehow live a life of guilt or shame that somehow motivates us. Instead, the point of life is to live in the abundance that we were created to live in. And Easter is the proclamation that that is accessible and available to all, all of us. And that once free, we are invited to partner with Jesus, to join with Jesus in making sure that everyone in this world shares in that abundance. And for some people in this world, it's as simple as making sure that they have clean water and a safe place to live and a chance to grow. And for others, it's the abundance of learning to live without guilt or without shame or the freedom of making life-giving choices rather than life-reducing choices. For some, living in the abundance is learning how to share their wealth and what they have too much of. We are invited to join this resurrected Jesus in a resurrection life, a kingdom life here. Because see, finally, the message here at Easter is that we are all free. Just as Jesus came out of the tomb, so too we come out of our tombs and we become free to be children of God in all of our glory. We are free to love then without condition. And who is it in your life right now that you are holding to some condition that they may never meet? 
Where is it in your life that you're holding love ransom because you're angry or hurt? You are free now to love without condition, irrationally. Even those who don't love you or don't return it, or those who you have imagined or have indeed hurt you, we are free now to love and let those chains fall away. We are free to dance through life, given all of its difficulties and all of its challenges. We're free to have a horizon that's beyond today and this moment and this pain and this struggle. And we have a horizon that, that bursts through tombs and bursts away stones and fall, uh, make the chains fall away. We are able to see past this present moment and dance through a life that's guaranteed into a future that's promised, into um, an eternity that's restored. We are free to be filled with joy. I meant um, to take a look, and, and I don't remember the number anymore, how many times the word joy or rejoice is used in the New Testament, but it's stunning how often. And it's usually used to describe the Christian life. And the word joy is, is just what you think it might be, and even more in the Greek New Testament. It also has to do with dancing. It has to do with loving this life. Once in a while, I, I drive through rush hour traffic, and I see all the tension, <laughs> and I see all the deep thoughts, and all the anxiety, and I think to myself, oh, please be free. Whatever it is that's weighing you down right now, dance a little somewhere today. Have a little joy somewhere today because there is a God in heaven and God intended you to enjoy this abundant life. We are free to dream. And for those of us, you know, past the advanced age of like 16, have forgotten to dream sometimes. And we turn corners in our life and all of a sudden the numbers become a little impossible and one day we're 30 and one day we're 40 and one day we're 50, and someday maybe some of us will make it till 60 or 70, okay? And God wants to plant in us dreams. I mean, look at the people God used in the, in the Bible. Some were young and some were very old. And for those of us who have left our dreams somewhere behind or have, have just dared to not even dream anymore, God says there's more, okay? And we're free to dream dreams and we're free to change this world and not just kind of settle into a casual acceptance of the, of, the, of the difficulty and the hardness and the cruelty of this world, but we can be empowered to believe because of the power unleashed on Easter that we can join with God to change this world. We can be free to be grateful and say thank you to God for what is rather than spending most of our time in our life thinking about what is not. Because most of the things that I spend my time thinking and wishing were are of no real consequence to me. I have spent far too many days of my life chasing after things that don't matter and wishing things were different in ways in which they don't even matter. The better days in my life are the days in which I'm grateful for what is and see the beauty and the mystery that's yet to unravel in the beauty of the particular life that I have. We are free to believe that and to live a grateful life. We're free to choose peace we are free to reconcile with those even whom with we think it might be impossible. So don't accept limitation. If you walk away from this Easter service, service today and want to change one thing about yourself, don't accept the limitations on the size of your heart. The human heart's about the size of your fist. An average heart weighs like 10 and a half ounces. But the heart of a person filled with the love of God is immeasurable and extremely powerful and extremely courageous. So don't accept the limitation on your love, on your compassion. Quit saying I can't or I don't because the God who refused to die will refuse your limitations and not accept them. Dare to change the script of your life. Look at how God changed this script through the person of Jesus. We are resurrection people. Our script can change. The trajectory of our life can be different. We can even ask God to change us. Our fundamental makeup as a person can change if we open ourselves to the power of God's spirit. For freedom has freedom.
for freedom, Jesus has set you free. The message of this Easter doesn't stop with the fact that Jesus Christ has risen today. But the message of Easter continues because you can rise from your grave. So let us walk away from here today filled with joy. And if the world knows nothing else about Christian people, let them know that we enjoy this life and that we are tremendously passionate about squeezing out every ounce of abundance we can find in our heart, in our compassion, in our sense of justice, that they might know the joy that God has in store for them. In the name of Jesus Christ, have a wonderful Easter, and let us all live lives of resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen.